Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, are you ready for a free fall? Because that's exactly what it looks like. It, it looks like that we're at least entering into that phase. We may already be into that free fall. Uh, things aren't looking too good. And it's not just the, the whole economy banking side of things. Uh, everything is just kind of starting to pile up pretty quickly. And uh, we may be getting pretty close to that phase that I have spoken about several times and a few others that, uh, well, some are way more experts than, than I could ever be, saying that this would be a slow progression until it hits a point and then it's a very quick drop off. Uh, the Federal Reserve today upped the, the interest rates by quarter of a percent. Uh, this isn't too much of a surprise, even though uh, most of the banks was begging the Fed to please not do this because it's making it difficult for banks to exist, um, which is also, I think, part of their plan. They want to consolidate all these banks into one or two of uh, them or the, the ones that own them, you know, like the J.P. Morgans and the Bank of Americas. Um, there's another bank already starting to fail. Uh, Pacific West, PacWest Bank Corps, um, has been uh, on a downward spiral the last few days. Basically, ever since First Republic Bank pretty much um, tapped out, uh, this PacWest has been going down. And then today, after hours, after the uh, stock market closed, they announced that they were going to be seeking uh, possibly someone to purchase them and then from that point on after our trading has just taken a nosedive they've lost another 50 percent um since the first of the year they've lost about 75 76 percent of their value uh, so they're 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 going down pretty fast and uh, it's very possible by the end of this week there will be another bank failure uh, I believe this one is like the 59th largest bank in the country, something like that. Um, uh, but it, it's not ending there. The Treasury today announced that um, they would start buying back U.S. debt. They would start buying back U.S. Um, you know the, the government debt. This is just—it's insane. Um, <laughs> they're gonna—they're gonna buy back their own debt, um, the, the debt that they produced out of fiat money, and then turn around and buy it back. I mean, I, I don't think anyone else can do that. I know I'm not capable of doing that. So we're going to print money that doesn't exist to create a, a ridiculous debt to the point that we're, we can't spend any more. So we're going to print more money so that we can buy that debt back so that we can say we're not in debt anymore and print more money because uh, it's my goodness this is just it's a it's a mental maze of how they're trying to spin this um they're talking once again about this platinum coin as some of you know all about it they're they're saying that they could mint one coin or more than one coin but uh one coin that's a trillion dollar coin it would be minted out of one ounce of platinum and just because the government puts on it $1 trillion, then that just immediately, like that, increases their balance sheet by a trillion dollars. Of course, an ounce of platinum isn't worth anywhere close to a trillion dollars. It's worth just a little over $1,000 right now an ounce. Um, but they, you know, it's it's being talked about once again. This is, isn't the first time, uh, but this may be the time that they actually pull this off, especially if uh, in less than 30 days, they're not able to come up with a, a debt ceiling increase in Congress, which is part of the problem. Janet Yellen says that uh, by about June 1st or right around there, we're going to run out of, out of credit. We're going to run out of everything. We're going to run out of money. Uh, the Treasury has has dropped over, <clears throat> I think it's over $200 billion just in the last few days, the, 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 the balance sheet. Um, it's it's just, it's it's insanity is what it is. Um, uh, the, the bond market, the swap uh, market with the bonds, they're showing that uh, the, the numbers are, and I don't understand all of this because I'm not one of these financial groups. I mean, I get it enough. But I don't know if I could explain it in detail. Uh, but basically, uh, the numbers are through the roof. Uh, and in other words, uh, the bond market is in is is believing that we are probably going to default on our our credit. And even if we're able to, uh, as a government, as a people, um, uh, extend that credit, raise that debt ceiling, most likely we'll still receive a lower credit rating as a government. Uh, China, of course, is trying to capitalize on this. Um, 
Chinese media is saying so, that, that, that China is, is all more eager to capitalize on the fact that the, the U.S. currency and the U.S. system is failing. It's overextended, it's failing, and so China is doing its best to try to move in in other markets uh, to become a, another reserve currency and maybe eventually the reserve currency. Um, they're, they're doing their best and they're actually making some pretty strong inroads because we're seeing country after country um, go completely off the dollar, go partially off the dollar, uh, talk about going off the dollar. Uh, this, this is stuff that, that would have been unheard of 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, I mean, we, we've overthrown countries and we've assassinated world leaders and, and you know, caused, uh, <clears throat> you know, coups to, to happen because governments or world leaders have uh, claimed or threatened to go off the U.S. dollar. And here we have uh, country after country doing the same thing. Uh, and it shows that we, we're no longer in control. We just aren't. Um, we're still the biggest boys, but, but that, that title is slipping pretty quickly. And it's very possible that we're entering um, a phase of just completely the, the you know, a free fall. Um, I was talking with some people yesterday, interesting enough, that if you kind of add things up, the, the Fed Now program is supposed to come out somewhere around the first to the, somewhere in June is what they're saying, maybe July. Uh, and then, of course, Janet Yellen with the Treasury Department is saying around the first of June uh, is when we run out of, out of credit, we run out of money. Um, and then if you look at what's going on in the war front, especially in the last 24 hours in Russia, uh, things are very much uh, picking up pace there. Uh, we may only have 30 to 60 days less of, uh, left of whatever kind of normalcy this is. Uh, it's very possible that the next 30 to 60 days, we could see a, a big increase in something, an escalation, whether it be on the war front, uh, or, or, you know, a complete downfall or more rapid downfall uh, in the economy and the banking industry uh, because we're just, it's, it's picking up pace, folks. Um, we've already surpassed uh, the banking collapse of 2008. Uh, we're, we're already bigger than that. Uh, and, 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 you know, only what, three or four or five banks really have, have completely failed or very nearly failed. Um, I was reading today that a trillion dollars in the last year, a trillion dollars has been taken out of U.S. banks. Just, it's gone. Uh, now, where is it going? It's, it's going into other types of investments. Uh, people are purchasing gold and silver, land. Uh, uh, who knows? But it, that's part of the problem. People uh, are losing faith in the banking system, uh, which they rightfully should because you shouldn't have much faith in it to begin with. Um, <clears throat> the, the whole war front is looking pretty crazy uh, with what appears to be, at least it's, the, uh, it's what Russia is saying, that um, Ukraine attacked the Kremlin. Now, this is, the, this is their capital, right? I mean, it'd be no different if someone attacked uh, the White House or the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Um, of course, no one was injured. I don't even know that there was much of any damage. Uh, but but the Russians are saying that this is a, an attempt on Putin's life and that the, the, the whole war has now changed. That, that's according to them. Now, I did see a report this afternoon that the military is saying that as of today, they're not noticing any drastic increases or changes of patterns uh, with Russian military yet. Uh, but uh, according to Russia, they're... they're, they're, uh, they're uh, Duma, the their representation, you know, house. Uh, what's the word? I'm slipping in my mind. Um, the <laughs> their their representatives, uh, they their speaker of their house, uh, the their foreign minister, um, the former president. Uh, just about every official in Russia has come out today and said um, Zelensky needs to go. We're we're taking the gloves off. We're taking him out. We're you know now the uh, Ukrainian government officials are in our target. That Kiev needs to be destroyed. All these kinds of things uh, indicating that that they're going to up it uh, up the ante. Uh, Russian state media is saying that uh, now, finally now the real war is going to begin uh, against Ukraine. Uh, and so because of all of this uh, that's happened, it's, it's very possible that we could see a major escalation. Uh, today, Zelensky uh, was in Finland uh, meeting with officials there and was supposed to just go there and come right back. But they're saying that he's decided to stay a little while longer. Hmm, interesting. 
uh, maybe there is something going on. Um, <clears throat> you know, Iran, uh, they, they, uh, they seized another uh, oil tanker that was heading to the United States. This is oil that was supposed to uh, be for the United States. Uh, they seized it. Um, it, it's just an, another escalation in that. Uh, also, the news media has come out and said that uh, a couple of congressmen, uh, or senators, I think, uh, Grassley, and I can't remember the other one, uh, says that, that, that they have intel that the FBI has uh, information that when Joe Biden was the vice president, he was in fact uh, paid off uh, by some foreign entity so that he, they could get access to him as the vice president, uh, which is interesting because that would not just be an impeachable offense, that would be a treasonous offense. That would, you know, it could it, at very little, the minimum get you into prison. Um, I, I doubt that anything will come of this, but it's very possible that this could be used uh, to get him out of office or to keep him from running again because they may have someone else that they want to put into place. I mean, you know, Hillary's got to have at least one more chance and who knows, maybe it's the time for Mike Obama to step up and, and be the next president. We'll see. The point is, is that a lot of things are happening pretty quickly, and I've really just skimmed the surface of a few things. There's certainly a lot more going on. Uh, this whole economic, banking, financial, U.S. dollar de-dollarization, uh, it's, it's picking up pace, okay? Um, and, and of course, that's just my uneducated hillbilly opinion, but it does appear that it's picking up pace. And so we need to be getting uh, pretty ready. Um, maybe nothing will happen in the next 30 to 60 days, but there is a kind of a feel in the air with, with all the stuff that's been talked about over the last few months kind of all coinciding on specific dates or, or very close dates and then the things that are happening now. Um, 30 to 60 days, things could drastically change and you need to be getting ready for that. Um, you should have already been getting ready for it. If you haven't been, you're, you're way, way, way behind the curve. Um, but you can still get somewhat ready for it. Uh, and for those of you that have been getting ready, you need to get tough and hardened uh, and, and get your battle face on because uh, it's very possible that that kind of stuff is uh, getting ready to, to kind of fall apart. Um, you know, I get questions all the time. What should people do about their money? I, you know, I don't know. I don't keep hardly anything in the bank unless just what I absolutely have to. I don't have a lot of money to begin with. Um, and so I, I, you know, we invest our, our money in, in things to make us more self-sufficient. That's our primary. We don't have enough money to be setting it in offshore bank accounts and major investments or anything. So we just take our income and we put it into the things that makes us uh, less reliant upon the system. I think that should probably be most people's first priority. Um, and then from there on, there are things that you can put your finances into that keeps it a little bit more protected uh, against the collapse of the banks and the U.S. dollars. Uh, but um, the, you, you really need to be doing one of the two or all of it. Um, making sure that you're stocked up and you're ready uh, because it's, it's, it's all happening. And it doesn't mean that the bottom's going to fall out in 30 to 60 days. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. I'm not predicting that at all. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. But that's not what I'm saying. I am saying that I think in the next 30 to 60 days, we're going to start seeing things uh at some point in that takes some pretty drastic turns picking up speed making it more obvious you know several more banks uh, will have failed in that time uh, and we'll be moving ourselves closer and closer to a centralized banking system and a centralized banking digital currency uh, so um, you better buckle up folks and you better be ready for this one because it's going to be a real bumpy ride Folks, you need to be getting your houses in order and preparing mentally, physically, and spiritually uh, because it's getting a little crazy and you should be definitely uh, getting yourselves prepared and stocked up. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Folks, we are living in uncertain times where chaos seems to be around every corner. With wars and rumors of wars, economic collapse, pandemics, and more, we should strive daily to become more prepared mentally, physically, and of course spiritually. Please check out My Patriot Supply for all your preparedness needs. My Patriot Supply offers Ready Hour Food, Alexa Pure Water Filters, and many other emergency and survival products. 
My Patriot Supply is an American-owned company, run by Americans producing American-made food. Emergency food from My Patriot Supply has a 25-plus year shelf life. It's simple to fix and delicious to eat. With My Patriot Supply, you can sleep at ease at night knowing that you and your family have the emergency food to last through the coming times. To find out more, click on the link in the description below or go to preparewithtravis.com.